Hello everyone, we are the Kirk Sisters. Hi. We're going to speak about what do women do when we are no longer in love with our significant other. Oh. Stay tuned. not in love we give up we give up we don't cook anymore we don't bust it wide open anymore we don't ask you to do anything anymore it's just a wrap and it's so it's so it's sad because a lot of people won't ask you you know like what are we doing we're wasting our time I think we're just wasting each other's time because I'm fed up. And a lot of people stay in things for conveniency. Well, some people, like I've heard a lot of my uh, guy friends say, I got a lot of guy friends. It's cheaper to keep her. So if you're not in love with her, so why do you want to keep her for? I, I feel like that's conveniency. If it's cheaper to keep her. You know, the car is in her name. This is in her name. Mm -hmm. The bills are on. Um, that's a to, user. Mm -hmm. That's a, I, I agree. I agree. But that's a lot of people's um justification it's an opportunist that's for that's a lot of people justification of why they stay in relationships that they're not in love with because they'll never get that opportunity again, yeah but i do believe people will always i mean nothing is perfect i believe people that's been together for 40 and 50 i have grandparents my grandparents are in their 80s mm -hmm. both of them. both of them but i have my mother is 60. So, if they're in their 80s and my mother is 60, you do the math. They were together for a long time. And I do believe, I have yet had the conversation with either one of them one-on-one. -on -one, and that's my goal for this year. To go talk to them one-on-one. -on -one, not together. Well, together too. But I also want to get three. So, I want to get his, her, his side, her side. And then both together. Well, you in love every day for all of those years. I know they've been together 60 years, for a fact, plus 60 years because my mother is 60, but they're 80, so I know they've been together for over a half a century, and they still together, but I just want to know where they in love the whole time, and I know they, they, I know they wasn't in love the whole time, but I just want to hear their side of it, because that's a beautiful thing when you can meet someone in your 20s. And now you're 80 some years old and you still see that person. You watch that person evolve or grow or fuck up. Just get old wrinkles in the face from the teens, 19, 20, to now 80s, almost 90s. That's a beautiful thing at the end of the day. But I just feel like you have to be built. You, you have to be built strong for that. It has to be in your destiny for that because a lot of people just going off what we know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, being loyal and sticking it out is a, is a is a good thing. But when you're no longer in love, what do you do then? I mean, for me, all I know how to do is be happy. That's my first and foremost thing. And if being happy means cutting cutting screens, letting you fly high, I fly high. Then that's what I'm gonna do. I don't want to be with anybody and continuously to hurt them. I don't want to hurt anybody. That's not my motive in anyway. If we fall out of love first, I think we need to talk about it. And if the talking don't get us anywhere, then we have nothing. I mean, love is a beautiful thing, and I, I don't think people fall out of love. I just think people would never end love. Mm -hmm. People need to realize mm -hmm. that if true love, it never fails. Right. It never fails. I know people that. True love 
Only thing did them apart was death. Death. And that person is, is no longer living now. So you had no other choice but to move on. But at the end of the day, that was your true love right there. Because it was nothing in the world that that person would not do for you. It was nothing in the world that could keep that person from you. No mound, no valley. That's true love. But if you're not in true love, I mean, it'll crumble. It'll, it'll crumble because it's not, it's not true. That's my intake. Well, I Input. Like, well, I feel like um, I don't believe, first off, I don't believe of living a lie. If we not working out, I believe in sitting down talking about it. If we just can't get it right, I believe in letting each other go, letting you go. You know, because you deserve to be happy, I deserve to be happy. I don't believe in just continuing just sitting in a relationship and you going doing this, I'm going doing that. No, you know, I don't I don't feel right doing it. So I honestly believe that I'm going to let you go. You know, you go ahead and live your life. If it's meant to be, we'll come back together one day. But I no longer want to sit down and discuss things with you. When I'm, I'm not in love with you no more, I don't, I clean up. Do you ever notice me cleaning up and it's already clean? There's something to it. I don't know. I no longer have nothing to say to you. I don't care what you do. I'm not in love with you no more. I don't, it just, I don't give up. It just, we might as well just go ahead and just go our separate ways and that's it. Because I'm not finna sit here and go back and forth with you. You get what I'm saying? So just do you and I'm gonna do me. Some no, people don't. some people give the fuck up. Some people want to fight for it. Some people say, hey, bitch, let's go to counseling. Whatever you choose to do. And so some people get on their knees and pray. Me, I get on my knees and pray. I say, Lord Jesus, I know I don't love this nigga no more. If it's meant for me, Lord, give it to me in your name. If it's not meant for me, Jesus, take it away from me in your name, Lord. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. Just fix it for me. And that's what he's been doing for me. He's been moving people out my way. All types of people. Ugly motherfuckers. People with money, all of them, he been moving them. And I've been doing damn good without him. And I'm going to keep on doing good without him. Do I love him? Love him. L love him. Do I need him? Hell no, I don't need him. Do I want him if I choose to? Be honest and let him know that she's not in love with him. But I know being in a marriage, you fall in and out of love. Point blank, period. That's a given. Everybody that knows that been married knows that you're going to fall in and out of love. Some days you're going to feel like you're in love. Some days you're not going to feel like you're in love. But if you get to a point where you're not in love anymore and it's just gone for good, then she needs to be honest with him and let him know that, you know, look, hey, it's not working. I'm not in love with you anymore. And maybe they need to seek counseling and see what it is that's causing her to feel that way. But all I can say is honesty. Honesty is the best key. Letting him know how you feel. If you, if you present that and let him know, look, I'm not feeling the same way that you're feeling about me. I don't know what it is. Y'all can try to get some help. But it's normal to be in, in is she married? Is she, if you're married and you're married, it's normal to fall in and out of love. Some days you're going to want to wring their neck. Some days you're going to be so in love with them that can't nobody tell you anything about them. Some days you might want to pull out your gun and make them tap dance sometime. You know what I'm saying? And some days you might be like, dog, I just love my baby, so let me go fix his favorite meal. You, you just never know. I mean, it's just things that you do just like. And that's, that's called growth. You're growing, you're learning each other. And sometimes you can deal with it. Sometimes you can't deal with it. You know what I'm saying? But if you're falling out of love with someone, and it's continuously staying that way because it's normal to do that. But if it's continuously that way and you're no longer in love with them, poor and black beard, then you need to let him know and be honest with him and just tell him, look, if the feelings are not the same anymore. I agree. I absolutely agree with everything you're saying. I feel like, you know, that, that should be the first thing, you know, especially if you're married. You know, if you're married, I wouldn't give up easily, even if I'm just in a relationship with a person because... If that's whom I want to be with, you know, I'm going to fight to the end to try to stay with them. So I say, you know, first off, speak to your significant other. Let them know how you feel. Go see counseling. You know, do as much as you can. I can say about my marriage, you know, when I was married, I feel like I did everything I possibly could to save my marriage. And sometimes it just didn't, it, it, it just didn't work out. So try counseling. 
And if you see what well, counseling not working, then hey, you just have to depart and go y'all separate ways. Sometimes we just outgrow each other. We just not meant for each other. And sometimes it just take you having to go through some things to see who's meant for you and who's not meant for you. And also you learn lessons within those situations. So that's my input on inf on that information right there. Good riddance. I don't give a fuck. It's 2009. We have one life to live. I know if you don't fucking love me, if I don't love you, I'm so fucking what? Good read. I don't have time to prove a point to anybody anymore. May my life speak for me. I'm not in the business to keep on showing people how much I care about them. If I give up on you, it's a wrap. It's just over with. Go find you something safe to do, and I'm going to go find me something better to do with my time. Because I don't call anyone. I don't need any friends. I don't need a companionship. None of that. My life too popping to sit around and beg anybody for any attention. Cause I got enough of that. So if I done fell out of love with you, it's for a reason. You're boring, you're not on my level, or I'm not on your level. It goes both ways. I don't have anything else to offer you. You might have not anything else to offer me. Just good riddance. I'm not gonna sit around and mope and fucking grope about it. So that's just how I feel about it. Good riddance. Good fucking riddance. Maybe she there for security. Maybe she there because he paying all the bills and mm -hmm. she probably came for four out of bills by herself. But all I can tell you is boss up. And, and then don't even boss up. Depend on God. So many people feel like they just can't make it. And when I was a little girl, I just felt like, you know, I was around people that just felt like they just couldn't make it without a man. Well, hey, ain't nothing wrong with you, you going out to get it, get it on your own with that man. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but I know a lot of people that stay in, in, in toxic relationships because they felt like they couldn't do it on their own. Right, and I, and, I, and, I and for those women or those like men, it's a such thing as depending on God because I know people with multiple kids that get it on their own. You don't necessarily need a mate to make it. I know people with multiple kids, excuse me, multiple kids that are just successful and happy off with them and their kids, then people with multiple kids that feel like they just have to have that boy feel. Mm -hmm. I got to feel this boy. I need this man. I got all these kids. What am I going to do? You going to raise them. I know people with kids that they got God in their life. They raise their kids and they're fine. They don't got a man in every slot. They don't need a man there to validate or a man there to make it work for them and their kids. Because they solely depend on God. Versus, like I said, my childhood, I've known people that just say, well, well, I needed a man with all these kids. That means you depend more on man and lesser on God. And I'm so big and strong on God that I can be in, in, in here by myself. And I still, I will fret not. Because I know he's in the midst. I know he's taking care of me. And I got faith bigger than a mustard seed. So I don't worry about that. So if I'm not in love with you, I'm not going to use you. I'm not going to make a fool out of you. I'm going to be like she said. I'm going to be woman enough and tell you, listen. I'm not in love with you. You got 30 fucking days. And that means get it together. Because ain't nobody going to evict me. Because <laughs> I be at home. So you got 30 days. Because I ain't in love no more. Simple as that. And if you're scared... You feel like you're scared? Go to Whatever church. reason it is, I mean, seek the man high above, and like I said, go to counseling, speak to a close friend, whomever you feel comfortable confining your business in. Speak to somebody, you know, and of course, speak to your significant other, but I don't know if he or she takes it, or in this situation, I don't know if he's taking it well, if you tried to speak to him about the situation, but. Like I said, seek counseling, you know. And that's all I can say on it. Also, I know that, you know, it can be kind of hard, especially if you're married to a person and you're accustomed to being with that person and used to that person being around. So you're not going to be able to do anything until you're ready to do it. Now, regardless of what anybody else tells you to do, you're only going to move on your own time. My suggestion is to build your nest up. You know how women build a nest up somewhere else? Start working on building your nest up somewhere else. Start accumulating things over here. 
Not letting this person, this side know what's going on with this side. Don't Just you solely big one yourself up so that you, when the time comes and you know that you are fully prepared and you are ready to say adios amigo, then that's what you do. But other than that, you know, if it's, it's minor things uh, that you say that you're not in love with him for, then you might want to go to counseling. Check it out. See what's going on with you because you could be the toxic person. Yeah, right. You could be the reason why things are not working. You know, so don't be so quick to give up. Give yourself an opportunity to be loved because you, you do deserve being loved. You do deserve being with someone that's going to treat you right. So give yourself an opportunity to find out if it's something going on with you that's being toxic that you need to work on to be able to allow that person to love you. Right. So um, with that being said, you know, that's all my, I have on that because, you know, I, I went through a bad marriage myself. But I have learned a lot from that bad marriage, even with anything dealing with anybody. I know that things that I have to work on with myself first in order for me to be able to allow someone else to be able to do that for me. And so, you know, sometimes you, we, everybody, we go around and we put on these faces. Please believe I do it too. And I know a lot of people do it. They put the faces on and think everything's okay. But deep down inside, it doesn't be okay. So, you know what I'm saying? So you're not alone. Just work on yourself. Work on yourself and, like, you know, pray. Yeah. Pray, you know, needs an expert guide to guide you and make to make the best decision that you can. But if you really think that you can work things out and this is not a, a deadbeat guy and he's a good guy, then my suggestion would be to go and work on yourself and find out what it is, the reason why you do not love that good guy. Because you should be in love with a good guy. Right. Leave them bad guys alone. Leave them alone. Do all, like on Why Did I Get Married, do what Janet said, write a list. Write the good things about mm -hmm. them and then write the bad things about them. Yeah. You know, and just go from there. And like my big sister said, pray about it. You but can never be, go wrong with prayer. Yeah, like, prayer yeah, changes yeah. things. And be grateful. And don't be yes. afraid to take risks, though. Don't be yes. afraid. And then don't beat yourself up for the decisions that you have made. Right. Because if you have decided to end a relationship because you were no longer in love, don't think, oh, wow, I fucked up. This is the only man that ever cared about me. Because that's a lie. Right. That's a lie. It's plenty fucking fish in the sea. Be It'll be someone out there that'll love you even better, ten times more than what he did. Yeah, but that's you're why you pray. That's, yeah, why, that's, why, process, you pray. that's why you pray. That's why you pray for God. In the process, you know, I'm not talking like about that. messing up a good man. I'm talking about you know, know that's why you have to be toxic. Because if a man didn't love me, he don't have to be toxic. If he just didn't love me and wouldn't love me no more, but she's not I'm in love with him. Today. He's in love with her. But I'm just giving an example, vice versa. If a man don't like my style, he can't accept me and my all my flaws. So you talking and he to just her saying, man now. And he just saying, I can't love this girl because this, this, bitch, you do. this bitch is crazy. I can't fuck with She's this bitch. She's talking to you This now, bitch is crazy. Her. The man. What am I supposed to do? Am I, am I entitled to him being fake with me and saying, okay, well, I'm just going to be around because I feel sorry for No. If I'm not your style, if I'm not your type, Tell me and move on. Don't waste neither one of our time because it goes both ways. It goes both ways. It's some men out there that don't want to tolerate dumb bitches, stupid bitches, ignorant bitches, bitches that can't control themselves. It's some men out there that don't want to tolerate them. And it's also some women out there that don't want, don't want to tolerate men like that. So, yeah, you may have some good characteristics about yourself, but everybody's flawed, though. Everyone is flawed. So, if I'm flawed and you choose to love me and you don't give up on you don't give up on me, then that's something we got some. If you, if, if you truly feel like that you're no longer in love with him, then just let him know. Don't, don't, don't string him along, especially if he's a good guy. You don't want to hurt nobody in the process of that. You want to, you know, let him go, cut his ties, and get with somebody that, that, that wants to be with him. But if you don't find, you know what I'm saying, just find that strength and find that courage just to let him know. But if you're married, baby, you're going to have to go, you know what I'm saying, you're going to have to go deep down within yourself and find out what it is and why you don't, why you're not in love with your husband anymore. You're going to have to find that out. That's something you're going to have to do on your own. I forgot the author of that book, but the five love languages. Go read that book. Mm -hmm. I was, I, someone gave me that book when I was married, trying to fight for my marriage. But that book is really good, and you'll be amazed how of how many marriages it didn't help, and how many people, you know, that's not married, that's trying to get married. Mm -hmm. 
it helped them too. I read that so, book too. You yeah, need I, to I, know I, your love language. You need to know the love language. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe that's it. But it, like I'm saying, please, whatever you do, fight. You know, because no relationship is perfect. No marriage is perfect. Fight. Do as much as you can to try to save it. And just pray about it and let God lead you in the direction you need to go. So, you know, guys, we want to, we love you. We love speaking with you. We love talking with you. That's going to be the end. That's going to be the wrap for this show. Look, put in the comments if you want us to talk about anything else. And if you disagree with anything that we said, if you want to add to it, let us know. Put it down in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the comments below. All right. Peace, love, love and hair grease. God bless. Hair grease. <laughs>